Hello guys and welcome to my review of the current state of the game when it comes to Digimon Super Rumble and what my thoughts and feelings are on the game at this point. As you can see this game is looking very pretty. Um, the character it has, the animation of the Digimon, the way they feel alive and the big almost open world. It's kind of like an open world developed into separate segments so to speak. As you can see this is a bit of an instance where I can go into a building but this world is generally pretty much open. You can run from each area to area. Being able to go further depending on how far you are into the game. And as you can see, little touches of detail such as these butterflies just flying around make the place feel so alive and vibrant. I've heard some people complain about the graphic fidelity of the game. But in my opinion, I think it looks perfectly fine. Especially for an MMO standpoint. It may not be top tier in top of like the top tier of graphics that we see nowadays but it doesn't have to be the game still see seems very nice it's very pretty has a beautiful look to it as you can see in the various places there are bits of flavor and character being able to see other people with their digimon running around there are various times to the story uh so that's what you'll basically be following um, in terms of the Digimon anime from the old days, um, the original Digidestined Series 1. You'll basically be going from location to location, following the story, and you'll take part in events which took place in the story in terms of actually following the anime rather than just being in a world which contains Digimon. So you'll see various things, like various characters in the story that you pay homage to, such as Merriman when he first attacks the village and everybody is panicking. You got the water all dried up with the ship and that was thanks to Merriman. There are little pieces of the anime which fit um, into the game and basically make it feel more alive and vibrant and help you relive some of those memories that you had as a child. If you was a 90s baby like me and grew up on Digimon. There are various Digimon to um, collect and go through. Turning from an egg into a baby to in training. And rookie and then from you can fight with them. And there are various different forms you can reach. Currently in terms of the game you can only reach up to ultimate. But as they continue on with the story and Megas come into it we'll start to get Megas. They are as I said following on the anime storyline. Going from places like the beach that you first started off on in the anime where you have to deal with Shelmon down here. And you get nice little loading screens like this which kind of fit the area. So as you can see you got Shelmon and they actually have little subtle nods to the game. For example if I was to fight these with an Agamon in my party there's a percentage chance it can turn into a Greymon. Um, reference to the anime where of course in order to defeat Shelmon, Agumon to protect Tai turned into Greymon to fend them off. And in terms of graphically, some Digimon are higher tier than others. As you can see, you got a nice reflective shine on the Metal, um, uh, metal Greymon, for example. Tarmon's looking pretty nice in some areas. But there are certain places where there are low quality in terms of Digimon designs that don't really fit in. Such as if we head to here, which is the island where I can hatch Digimon, for example. Um, Leomon... I'm sorry, in terms of graphical, he needs a bit of an update, because I'm not, I, I'm sorry, but those look like PS2 hands. Let's be honest there. In terms of the island that you get to hatch Digimon on as well, it is random what setting you can get. You can get a pyramid, you can get an ice landscape, you can get a garbage landscape. There's no way to choose which one you get, unfortunately, so what you get is what you're stuck with. They'll probably add that to the cash shop in future um, parts of the game when they get to that point. Because right now there's no way to choose which location setting you actually want. Speaking of the cash shop, there are various things you can get in the cash shop such as outfits, which can change the look of your character depending on what you choose. Um, there are always stuff being introduced to the game. For example, you could look really fly like so. And they also have some things which do have a bit of a pay to win mechanic to a degree unfortunately that may turn some people off um but it is what it is it's a free to play game so you don't have to purchase the game they have to make the money somehow so far it's not too crazy you can definitely get a bit of a boost but pvp isn't really flushed out to where it's really an issue 
But if you was hoping to get into PvP, not purchasing some crowns and spending them on stuff like this can affect your time here. You can also get certain items which guarantee Digivolution, as you can see right here. This is for champions, this is for ultimates. And they guarantee what choice you want. So, if, say, for example, if we take a look at my Greymon here, you'll see there are various options of what you can Digivolve into. If I really wanted to school Greymon, I can farm for items which will give me another 10%, which will then lower Metal Greymon to 75% and give me a 20% chance of getting school Greymon. But it does not guarantee it for me, but I can get that for free, which can increase my chances, which is a nice nod to the game. It's not completely just go and buy stuff, but it doesn't guarantee the Digimon you want, so you do have to go to the cash shop if you want to do that. So if there was a specific path I definitely wanted, that can definitely impede the way you go through the game, and it is unfortunate. There's also the issue with mutant Digimon, which you can see in the case of my Gabumon here. The 5% chance of becoming a mutant... Basically means you have to then use an item, which, you guessed it, you can get from the cash shop. If you get a mutant Digimon, you'll have to get one of these items. There are ways to potentially get them in-game um, through free-to-play means, but will require some time and effort and a bit of a grind to obtain. But I am happy that you are able to obtain it if you're willing to put the time and effort in. In terms of getting Digimon that you do not want, there is the option to revert them back into an egg. Which is nice if, say for example, I had all of Elecmon's line, for example. I didn't want another Elecmon. I can turn him back into an egg, which means I would have to hatch him. It would take several days to turn it into a full-grown Digimon. But it would basically allow me to re-roll, essentially to a degree, but it is random what I get out of the egg. It's not a guaranteed thing where I have a chance to get other Digimon that were in the same potential digivolution to turn into a rookie like Elecmon. Also, rumours and theories, uh, supposedly what I've seen in the Discord, is when you turn a Digimon into an egg, there is a small chance you can get the needle to demutant your Digimon. If you do mutant your Digimon, like in the case of my Bakamon here, it will get buff stats, but it will only be able to go up to champion. I will not be able to put it up to ultimate, and Mega eventually, if that becomes an option, because it is unfortunately a mutant, so I will need one of those items to defuse it back into a normal Bakamon to be able to allow me to Digivolve it again. Unfortunately, the only way to get Green Needles is you have to beat the story up to the current point. Um, I don't know whether they'll extend how far you have to go in the story in the future or not, but in terms of once you do beat the story of what's currently available, which is up to Meiosis Mon, You'll get the option to give items to Leomon, as you can see, Bancho Leomon here. And he will give you items, which you can then go to Cherrymon over. And as you can see here, this is where you get the Green Needle. Or you can get a Blue Egg, which can turn into Vmon. Um, also, you see that blue symbol there? If you see the blue text there, that basically means that your Digimon can have a chance to hatch with bonus stats. Depending on what type of Digimon, it can be 12% attack, strength, speed, or something like that. The other option is, you can feed various fruits, which do give various bonuses to your Digimon, but it's at a chance. There's no guarantee. Various fruits will give different stats to certain Digimon, so if you want to specify what you want for your Digimon, it is kind of difficult, honestly, because, unfortunately, when you do have a baby Digimon and you turn it into an in-training, any fruit you give is a chance to give that stat. In terms of turning in-training into a rookie, it's random what you can get unfortunately, and it can have a big impact. Let's say I fed my Tanamon here a bunch of strength items because I really wanted the Palmon line which is strength based. But instead, I get something like a Renamon, which is an intelligence based Digimon which does better intelligence wise. I could potentially waste those fruits because there's no guarantee of which rookie I get there's no way for me to choose, there's no item in game that can force that choice. It's random what main training will turn into, and this can take up to 3 days. Which means I would have to give 15 fruit total for it to go from in training to a rookie, as well as give it toys as well. Because the toys level training points, which allows you to actually digivolve your Digimon when it's a baby or an in training. In terms of green eggs, they will always give you a baby Digimon. Uh, there are different varying timers. It could be 3 hours or 6 hours, 
for the green egg. It doesn't really have an impact on the Digimon you get out of it. It's just a different timer. And some eggs are faster than others, unfortunately. Um, so you may get unlucky and get a 6 hour, which means you'll have to wait longer. But once you get a baby Digimon, it will take 3 days to turn into an in-training. And from an in-training form, it will then take another 3 days to turn into a rookie. There are various characters from the anime, as you can see. I already showed off Shellmon at this point. You also run into Pixiemon, which took part in helping the Digidestined. And he is around throughout some of the story. I don't want to give too many spoilers, of course, if you haven't seen the anime, but... I'm just letting you know that there are nods to various Digimon which did show up in the story and it is a very beautiful nice touch like for example the village of beginnings having all these eggs with Elecmon raising them and essentially this is where the village of beginnings is. It's where the Digimon start off. They get grow from an egg into Digimon and they grow. In terms of traveling around the areas, there are various things such as fast travel points which allow you to go from place to place at the cost of bits. It only cost me 500 because I bought the uh, battle pass, otherwise it would cost you a thousand. And they can be used for ways to get around from different places, but you have to activate them to be able to use them. If you're a person who really likes achievements, there are various achievements you can do in-game. And fighting a certain amount of a Digimon can get you achievements, and sometimes even get you a title. For example, if you notice, I have the Squeak title from the amount of Chumon I have fought. But completing various parts of the story, I will get different titles. And some are actually more stylized than others. For example, Conqueror of Infinity Mountain, because I did the arc when it came to Devimon. So, for example, I got a nice title above my head, which is a very nice nod, and it helps recognize the accomplishments of a player and how far they've gotten. The main drawback in this game, if you're an English player like me, as you can see, is this game is mostly in Korean. So, pretty much, you won't really know what you're doing, which means you'll have to use a translator for the most part. And there is something known as a macro checker, which will pop up periodically while you're playing. And unfortunately, unless you have a Korean keyboard and understand the Korean alphabet, there is no way to do anything about that. You can't remove it, you have to quit the game, start it back up just to play, or you have to use a translator to be able to copy the text and put it in. And it's not as simple as just typing in what the letters are because... You don't know the Korean alphabet. You don't know what keys correspond to what letters. So you have to take a picture using something like... You have to use a translator such as Yandex or another translator. In which you would have to take a picture of the text. Um, basically, I use my phone for that because it's a lot easier for me. But I would copy that text. Uh, sorry. In order to use a translator, you have to use something like Yandex, which allows you to take a picture of the text. You would then need something like Discord or something to type it into, so then you could go to it on your PC and grab it, um, essentially. And then you would have to copy and paste into the game by pressing Ctrl V to get rid of the macro checker. Which is really annoying, because that will pop up multiple times throughout playing. And speaking of the macro checker, this is exactly what I mean. I would have to take a picture of my phone, get it translated, convert it to text, send it to Discord, go to my Discord, copy the text and control V to paste it in. And unfortunately there's not really much I can do about that, but it is something I would have to do. Okay, so I've done the whole translation thing, copied the text and whatnot, got it off my Discord to put it in, so now I can move again. You also have something known as a treacherous system, which allows you to get certain blocks, which will increase the amount of stats you have. For example, as you can see here, I've spent a lot of bits getting these blocks because it is random what you can get. Obviously, the maximum number you can go up to is 4%, but this can definitely change the dy dynamics of how your Digimon operates. For example, when it came to my Greymon, it was really slow, so I had to invest in some speed, which is what you can see here. He also is a mixed attacker Metal Greymon, so I've gone with Strength and Intelligence. I must say the biggest complaint I have with this game, in my opinion, is the gameplay loop. Because unfortunately, when you are dealing with Digimon, and you have to manage stuff like spending money on food and 
uh, candies in order to restore essentially your HP and SP. You also have to manage your evolution bar. Now, this will not go down unless you fight, but depending on what stage in the game you are at, whether you're using a rookie, you will always restore 1% for one opponent, 1.50 for two opponents. And every single time you run out of EVP, you can no longer digivolve into the next form, which means you have to refill that bar again. Unfortunately, it does get extremely tedious, especially after two weeks of playing, Having to constantly go back to rookie form and fight just to get my EVP back, just so I can continue to even story or leveling up through grinding and whatnot, it can become extremely tedious in this game, and that's probably my biggest complaint. Depending on what form you are in determines on how much it will cost you. For example, with me being in champion form, it will cost me roughly 1.0 each Digivolution fight that I have, so... If I was to go in this champion fight right now, uh, fight this Tumon, it consume 1% of the bar, which means I could get in 99 fights before reverting back to a rookie. However, in terms of an ultimate, it would cost me 2.50 each fight, which means I could only get about 40 fights in before I had to then go back to grinding. So going up in Digivolution would mean it would take me longer because I would be able to fight for less time and I would have to keep boosting my EVP back up, which really does make the game kind of dull and boring. It's not too bad because you do have things such as a Tumon, and you can just go AFK standing here. These will keep aggressing on me as long as I'm down there. If they have a red text, they are aggressive. And I could go AFK, watch something, go do chores around the house, and my EVP bar will fill up. So technically you do have that saving grace, but it does suck because sometimes people just want to play the game. We don't have to keep going back for the sixth time in a day back to Tumon and keep getting our EVP back up just to carry on going around and doing quests and grinding because it drags out the game and really ruins the gameplay loop. There are ways you can get EVP back through buying items in game, but they're 4,500 each which means you would need 135,000 for free Digimon. There is no way you would make that back before they all run out of EVP. Even at the end level content, you still would not make that amount of bits back. So you're essentially always going to be losing money when it comes to that. There are submissions throughout the game as well, where it'd be like kill X amount of this, uh, find this many items, stuff like that. That you can do besides the story and use them to level up. In terms of the village of beginnings, there are daily quests which you get each day, which are the green exclamation marks. And completing these quests will give you items every single day. And they are they are kind of annoying to do to a degree. Because it's not you just want to play the game. But at least they are a guaranteed way to get cues which allow you to level your skills. Speaking of leveling skills, in terms of leveling skills, you will need to use cubes, and you get these from fighting very in Digimon. Being in champion, I need purple cubes. Being in rookie, I need green cubes. And being in ultimate, I require these peachy coloured cubes. And in order to get those, you have to fight Digimon within 11 levels of you of the corresponding type. For example, if I fight rookies, that would give me blue cubes. As long as I am 11 levels within their level range. In terms of being over leveled, I cannot be more than 11 levels or I will not get any item. In terms of champions, you would have to fight champion Digimon, which are within 11 levels of you. In order to get purple cues, which allow you to level your champion skills. And when it comes to ultimates, you would have to fight ultimate Digimon within 11 levels of you. In terms of you being a higher level, in order to get the peach cubes. And they are really rare, and it's a lot harder to fight Digimon that are ultimate versus Digimon that are rookie in order to get cubes. So each one consumes more time because obviously the more difficult the Digimon, the higher level they go. Also gives them more HP and the harder they hit. Also a side note that I probably should have mentioned while I was looking at the daily quests that I forgot to mention. Once you complete a certain area of the game, you will get daily quests for that section of the game. Also, the dailies do not change. They stay the same every single day. The dailies are the same dailies. There's no uh, change in flow or what they become for each day. 
So unfortunately, you will do the same thing every single day you choose to do the dailies. There's no variation to it, unfortunately, but that's just the way it is. All in all, I really do enjoy this game where it's currently at, but I do find like there should be more polish made, also a way to get EVP without having to constantly go and do the grind. But as this is a Korean game, I feel like that's probably not going to go away because Korean games are notorious for grindiness. And some people love that, some people hate it. So if you're not a fan of grinding, this game will probably not be for you. As for me, I'm fine with grinding as long as it's not too tedious. And I do enjoy playing this game. I can't complain really too much. Other than having to always go back and get the EVP, I do enjoy the game flow. I do love the detail and the character they give to some of these Digimon, where they make them seem alive and living, whether it's from the idle animation, the way the wings move, or as you can see, Ange Woman's lovely bosom on her chest. It's nice that they add the character to the Digimon to make him feel like they are actually alive and they're taking part in the world. They're not just there as a static figure just constantly behind you. I like the detail they've given. I also love the fact that I can follow along with the anime which I grew up as, with as a child. I mean, various Digimon from School Greymon to Wetamon, Devimon, Andromon that Izzy bumped into and many others. It's great seeing the design of the local areas which fit into where the Digidestined went to on their adventure and you get to follow on that. And I feel like that's a very nice nod rather than just being in the world with Digimon in it. It's nice being able to relive those memories. Obviously the polish and some Digimon need to be improved while others do already look great and they do have a very reflective scheme to many of their parts. For example, when it comes to Anjumon's Blade, this probably isn't the best location to showcase it, but it does shine a bit and reflect light to a degree, and the way they follow you around can sometimes be annoying, unfortunately, as you can see the blocking some of my screen. But for the most part, I do love it that they are animated and they fit into the world so well, as well as the wild Digimon which are stood around, moving around, like they are alive, they're just doing stuff in their daily day lives. And there are various achievements that you can earn, is definitely a nice nod, so it gives you something to accomplish, so you can set yourself a goal, which will keep you immersed into the story and playing through the game. Hunting down various Digimon such as Meromon or trying to find Andromon somewhere around the map in order to take them on and actually get the reward from them. Is also a very nice touch. Being able to use items which give you coordinate codes, for example, like this, they open a crack where you can fight various Digimon related to an area, and fighting various Digimon do drop them. For example, if I was to activate one of these, it'd probably give me a location around here that I could handle. In this case, unfortunately, this has given me a much further in the game area, so the ultimate I run into is probably going to be much more difficult to deal with, so I will probably want to make sure my team is standing strong and ready to back me up because I can switch them in and out of battle while I'm in the middle of a battle. A bit like you can with Pokemon to a degree where you can do a switch. So if your Digimon goes down, you can replace it with a Digimon that is able to fight. Speaking of Digimon, you can set certain Digimon in the front line and back line and depending on their speed stat, as you can see, we'll fight in various intervals. And they have multiple moves which have been very nicely animated in battle that you can follow along and use to make battle feel a bit more exciting. All in all, if you are looking for a Digimon game to scratch your itch and you really don't mind the grind, I really do recommend trying this game. Unfortunately, if you're an English player, that's a bit difficult um, because you need a Korean phone number to be able to play this as it's only open beta in Korea. There's no global release currently. But if you are willing to jump past the hurdles and get an account, whether it's through buying one or other means, and trying this game, and you're looking for something to scratch the Digimon itch, I feel like this game could definitely give it you. It'll keep you occupied for several weeks, especially if you love collecting various Digimon, and seeing how far you can get in the story, and revisiting certain areas. Of course, the title system is also a great nod as well, so if you want to run around and show off to people, you can always do so, and completing certain achievements will unlock titles for you. Um, in terms of PvP though, if you are looking for that kind of itch, PvP is definitely something you can do in the game. I haven't showed it off here, because not many people are willing to PvP, but you can either walk up to somebody, right-click them, and challenge them to PvP, 
Or you can activate this symbol down here, which will turn your name red, which will give you 10% more XP, but will allow you to run into other red players and instantly challenge them to a battle. Unfortunately, some players do like to sneak you when you're training other Digimon, using that 10% boost to your advantage, and they will pull out their strongest Digimon and run into you and force you into a fight knowing they will win. Unfortunately, people are going to do that. You can't do much about it. And depending on what server you go on would determine whether you run into more people. For example, server 1 has the most people, obviously being the top server, that's there, it's the first one people have access to, click on, so they're probably going to go with it. There are a lot of English speakers, but mostly Korean speakers on server 1. Server 2 and 3 have no idea, but server 4 also has a lot of English speakers as well. But it has a low population. If you are looking for a Digimon game, I reckon you'll really like this one. Definitely give it a go if you're willing. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you very much everybody for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Peace.